Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Thursday, June the 17th. Uh, the sun's just coming up. It's around 7 a.m. It's a gorgeous day and uh, we're slowly coming out of the lockdown in Toronto here, which is fantastic. Today I want to talk about solar power and we're looking here at two solar panels. Uh, the first panel, which we'll look at in a second, is a panel I've had for 20 years. And the second panel is uh, something I just bought recently on Amazon. So let's look at this first panel here. This panel here is a unisolar um, 10 watt panel, which I purchased about 20 years ago. And um, I used it to trickle charge. This is my HF transceiver, it's a K2. And it has a 12 volt gel cell inside. So I used this panel here to trickle charge the 12 volt battery in there. Now the panel came with a Morningstar solar uh, charger which this panel here produced um, I think at maximum up to 28 to 30 volts so to get it down to a charging voltage for 12 volts it used this particular um, regulator. This is a PWM regulator similar to the one I had on my Land Rover 30 years ago what it does is it, it switches the voltage on and off so that the average voltage is around 13.5 which is what you need to trickle charge the battery. Unfortunately or fortunately for the radio, the radio has a steering diode so you can't put the, um, a charging voltage in at the wrong polarity which is smart because being human we always make mistakes. Unfortunately this thing is designed to charge a 12 volt battery directly so if you've got a steering diode on there, it blocks the measurement reverse current, so it won't work. So what I did is I put a, um, this is the output of the solar regulator, it's a, a heavy duty automotive connector, which I like. I put on a, um, a National Semi LM78 series regulator on there, and that worked uh, very well to charge the uh, 12 volt uh, gel cell. Now let's look at this new panel here. Uh, this is an X-Drag and I got it on Amazon. It's a 70 watt panel and you can see that how the efficiency has increased. This area here is about the size of my previous panel which was only 10 watts. So for about a 50% increase in size I've got uh, seven times the power output. Now the nice thing about this panel is it has two USBs, each one produces 5 volts and it has an 18 volt output. Right now, uh, the sun's just coming up, so you can see from the voltmeter it's only producing about 10 volts. But it is producing enough voltage here. I'm charging uh, an Osmo Action camera here. There's my open plotter Raspberry Pi 4, which I can uh, connect in here as well. If you want to connect um, these panels in parallel, you can also do that. There's a port here. So if you had a second panel, you wanted to double the current output, you could connect it there. Um, when I saw the expression on the manual parallel port, it kind of confused me at first. I thought, oh my God, why would I want to connect the printer to the solar panel? Just shows you uh, uh, my age here. Anyways, um, so the 18 volts can be used for several things. I'm going to use the 18 volts. Uh, I can plug it directly into my laptop in the field. Uh, that's a Lenovo laptop, so it takes, uh, I think, 19 volts, so the 18 volts would be fine to charge the battery on that. The other thing I can do with it is, uh, this is a 80 watt lithium power pack, and it takes um, 15 volts, I think it can take up to 16 volts in to charge it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some steering diodes, put them on the 18 volts, so I can use it to uh, charge that. Now the other thing I can do, um, the panel comes with a series of connectors, which is nice. So here's a connector here you can put on a car battery. So I can use this Morningstar regulator directly with these and the 18 volts uh, to charge a, a charge a car battery. Uh, as well, um, I can operate uh, my K2 with um, the linear regulator that I have for this guy. I can operate the K2 from the 18 volts. So the nice thing about this panel as well is it folds up and it's portable, whereas this guy uh, was designed to go in a boat. It wasn't designed to be portable, so it, it's a fixed installation. So then just to recap then, with this new panel, uh, I'm able to operate um, 
my HF transceiver in the field. I can op operate the open plotter, Raspberry Pi 4, and I can charge my camera, and I can use my ham radio all at the same time. One of the things you'll notice here on the um, on this solar panel is that there are uh, various mounting uh, attachment points here. So you want to make sure that you uh, hang your panel in such a way as it, it's directly into the sun, perpendicular to the rays of the sun. And when you get the panel, they supply you these kind of mountaineering type of clips, which would be very useful in mounting the panel. Right now I have it sitting horizontally on a deck chair, so it's obviously not at the best angle to the sun. And you can see that it's instead of 18 volts, we're getting 10 volts. It's only because it's not, uh, it's not facing the sun. Um, these are some adapters that come with a panel which are great and these are the clips you can use on a battery. So here's a look at the panel when it's all uh, folded up um, and you've got the sets of mounting um, uh, mounting rings and the uh, clips of the battery and the various adapters. I'd say it weighs uh, anywhere from a pound, pound and a half to two pounds. It's not very heavy. Uh, it's fairly light and it's in a size that you can actually put, I can put on my knapsack and um, take on my bike uh, or carry easily on a subway, so it's very portable.